it is surprisingly chilly. Gonna do that bit of a plot tour that I said I was gonna do last week, so we are doing that. And the sun is out for it, which is particularly nice, but let me show you my incredibly floppy broad beans. So these are the ones that I sowed in the fantastic new SNAS root trainers. Um, and I said to you at the time, I will stick these in the conservatory until they've germinated and then I'll bung them outside. Does that look like I bung them outside? No, because I didn't. I completely forgot about them. Um, and they just kind of grew away happily on their own, getting leggier and leggier and softer and softer and floppier and floppier. And now this is the state we've got a, a blooming hanging basket worth of broad beans. Anyway, they'll harden up. I brought them up here now. They're about to have a bit of a rude awakening as to what real life is like. I'm going to stick them in the greenhouse overnight tonight because we've got another like seven, ten days or something of this unusually cold weather. Uh, so if I just plonked these out now, they would be uh, goners, basically. They're far too soft for life. So I'm going to put them in the greenhouse. It gets very cold in there at night, so they will have a bit of realization and then slowly I'll bring them outside, bring them outside in the day, stick them in the rain. They will toughen up and they can join their chums in that bed up there. But yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. That parsley looks fantastic. Oh and does the coriander. Look at the tarragon. Tarragon looks amazing. Right, let me get this over here. Put them on there, I think. Seems nothing else is growing in that blooming garlic pot. <laughs> <laughs> so you might have heard just then um, that we haven't had a great success on the garlic. So this is the um, Kingsland White. The checkmate has been brilliant, both in pots that were started inside and the ones that just went straight out into the bed. No problem with them whatsoever. Kingsland White, completely useless. And I mentioned this a couple of weeks ago, and I've had at least three people come back to me and say their Kingsland White hasn't worked either this year. And I was at the Bragg meeting last week, which is like Borough of Richmond Allotment Action Group, and I was talking to a guy there, and his Kingsland White didn't work either this year. So I don't feel like it's user error in this particular case. <laughs> uh, but we've got two. Let me show you what we do have up. So this, I mean, I've just plonked the broad beans on there because there's nothing in here, but that uh, was the original tray that we planted up with them. And then this one, so you can see we've got two, but there should have been five, six, uh, eight in there, I think. And we've only got two. One germinated in here, but promptly rotted off. And this wasn't too wet um, because it's indoors. Like it wasn't being out in the rain or anything that's rotted them off, which could have been a, a reason for the ones outside possibly rotting off because it has been unusually wet but the ones in here that shouldn't have affected so it's weird that both the ones outside and these ones just they have done nothing anyway um i'm supposed to be doing plot tour but i've actually got a couple of bags of compost in the car and some onions in fact the boxing day onions that i didn't pot up last week are here so that's the ishikura spring onions and also i think it was isla craig mum um, oh, yeah, there's some Isla Craig in there, so I'm going to go and get them from the car first and then we'll have a nose about. Do, Ooh. do I want the keys? Do you want to take the cut? The, yeah, I do. The keys to the gate too, just in case? Yes. That would be annoying. Get out there and no keys. Oh, have you got them on you or are they out there? Okay. Oh yeah, they're in the chicken house. Girly welly, girly wellies! Are you guardians of the keys today, girls? I know, you must be. Yeah. Now don't jump out. Oh, are you after a cuddle, darling? Oh, yeah. Sweetheart, yeah. Sweetheart. Let me grab the keys, girls. I'll be back in a minute. Back in a mo. Look at that, girls. Some bastard has dug up our dragon's tongue mustard. <laughs> it's always something. Ugh. Slops. I'm normally really careful about not leaving the wheelbarrow like the right way up so it catches the rain. Not this time. I've got soup in here, mud soup.
faire. This stuff is super heavy, they're only small bags. Super heavy, they're completely saturated. Oh. Oh. <sighs> <sighs> okay. Oh. looking chaps down there they need a bit of a water actually right well I guess it's probably appropriate to start having a oh, it's not really a plot tour I just there's so many things changing at the moment there's so much stuff like kicking off I just want to do like a spot tour of all the excitement may as well start in here so a couple of these bits we've already started with the uh, sad looking duo garlic in the pot <laughs> that is a big pot for two cloves of garlic they better be like baby's head sized <laughs> The, these are the onions. So spring onions, Ishikura, um, they have, I have to admit, been in less than ideal conditions up in my office because I was photographing them and I completely forgot to take them out again. So they've had no light for like a week. So the poor things, but they will recover really fast in here. Spring onions, I've got no worries about. These are actually the poor Bella leeks. They'll recover. They'll be just fine. Not entirely convinced that the Isla Craig will recover. And if I'm perfectly honest, I'm not really that fussed about that Isla Craig. Um, I've got, uh, what are the other ones? I've got the Rinsberger and the Red Baron all potted up, all growing away in their own individual cells. And they're looking really fine at home. So I think Isla Craig maybe just kind of be used as spring onion this year. What else have we got? Floppy broad beans, you know all about them. We've got chard in the waiting here, which I'm hoping, I mean, it's going to get too hot in here and it's probably going too bolt but it's so cold outside at the moment but these are going to go in fairly shortly and be kind of our early summer crops I'm pretty chuffed with those as you can see we've got some peppermint ones and we've also got the kind of the bog standard just uh, perpetual spinach ones so that is all tick there are a couple of strawberry ones that we've rescued um, we've got loads more of them out there but we, <laughs> we potted up two and then forgot about the rest we have more rescued um, coriander in here that was just in the bottom of some pots we were emptying. And here we have, that's the Iranian cress that I sowed just the other day. Doesn't it look fantastic? We'll be eating that soon. I shall might just have a little bit now. It is, it is such a strong flavor. That's well, even stronger than I remember it. Maybe that young, it's like got all of its, oh, oh. I feel like I'm doing a chili tasting video. That was that hot. Whew. Okay, so when it's that young, it's even hotter than uh, when it's fully grown. So watch out if you're growing that. Whew. More rescues like the coriander. This is the parsley we dug out from the polytunnel just the other day. It looks like it survived just fine. Very happy in there. The coriander from the same place. The tarragon is looking incredible. It's self-seeded like crazy. This was the original plant and it got done by the frost and we thought we'd lost it. So we just dragged it in here in case it was going to restart. And I think actually it is. I think it's sprouting from the bottom down there. But this is all the self-seeded stuff. So yeah, really chuffed with that. And this, chaps, was our overwintering carrots. Now, I don't know if you remember, um, we sowed them. They all came up. They look wonderful. And something came along and just ate the entirety of both boxes of them apart from one just one and that is this chap here uh looking amazing so if we'd had a whole box of them 
they hadn't been eaten, we could actually successfully be growing carrots like over winter. So that's given me a huge amount of hope that it is actually a really feasible thing to do. But <laughs> as long as they don't all get eaten. But what we ended up doing was re-sowing into the trays. Because we knew the stuff had already germinated, uh, we just re-sowed um, and tried to keep the slugs away from them. And that is all these chaps down here. So they were much, much slower, obviously, but we're talking about maybe six weeks after this one. So these ones are quite a long way behind and it was so much colder by the time they got going that they just haven't caught up. But you can see they are coming. So we should have some really nice early carrots and one particularly nice early carrot. And that is the state of things in the greenhouse. I've got a lot of work to do in here. Um, again, we've got rat problems in the sense of we've got a rat hole in the corner um, and this has got no proper flooring on it either, but I'm working on a solution to that. And this year um, I'm moving the staging that's currently at the end, you know, as you walk in, it's directly in front of you. That doesn't really give us a great deal of room on either side. So I'm gonna move the staging and kind of rejig that. So, um, yeah, got some work to do in but nothing as drastic as the polytunnel so this this is only like maybe two days work rather than the polytunnel which is a mission okay well i'm gonna leave the greenhouse to mum because she's queuing up for me to stop filming in here so she can get in there and stay warm because actually it's pretty nippy <laughs> mum it's all yours the greenhouse your empire is ready for you but she's gonna hide in there while we go and have a look at some exciting stuff. So I'm not going to do, you know, like normally when I do a plot tour, it's we walk around like every single bed. I don't think I'm going to do it like that. I'm just going to do some like, she's in. <laughs> I'm just going to do some highlights of the stuff that we've got going on. <laughs> Righty ho. Shallots are the first thing that's looking really good. I'm very happy with that. Sorry, please ignore the, the dead thing on the, on its suspension pot here. But these are the shallots, really chuffed. They're looking healthy and fab. And here is my non-Kingsland white garlic. That's what it should be looking like in the greenhouse, but obviously is not. So that is two things I'm pretty pleased about. Both of them looking really strong and no signs of allium leaf miner or white rot in there yet. So I know it's a bit early for that, but I'm always on the lookout. We're still eating the chimida wrapper. Uh, this was the 120 day one, you can see there's still some really, really, if I can get under the netting, there we go. There's still some really decent, beautiful, tender stems on there. Some of them have gone a little bit over, like these chaps up here, but we will still eat them, you know, because this is what happens. Obviously, you take the central stalk out and then it produces masses of other ones. And unfortunately, we've actually only got the four plants in here, but we did have a whole half a bed at one stage. But hey ho, once again, things have eaten them. This is another bit of chard that is just starting to come on now. It's grown, it's probably doubled in size over the last like two weeks. So that's really encouraging. So we'll be eating this one before the one that's in the greenhouse in there with mum. But I wasn't, oh, it's bright. But I wasn't entirely convinced that that one was gonna survive actually, the one that's out here. That's the Lucullus and it's a bit softer. So that's pretty pleasing actually that we're gonna have that one to eat fairly soon. And in the same bed as that, we have got the chicory. This is the leaf chicory that looks a bit like a dandelion and flowers with a beautiful, about <laughs> six foot tall, wonderful purple flowers. So some of these we will be leaving for flowers later on. We have got a red stemmed version in there, but this bed has had a bit of a hard time recently it keeps being dug up so they're getting buried and we have to uncover them but that is a wonderful vegetable to just be start eating about now. Leaf chicory is not something that I'd really grown before about three years ago when we were given some by an Italian lady on the top but you know what chicory is like they're normally quite dense either elongated or round and it's got a similar sort of flavour so it's quite bitter um, but more tender I'd say and you use it for cooking you don't really eat it raw I know they say you can put it in a salad that leaf chicory but um, kind of turns your face inside out bitter but just like sauteed in olive oil with anchovies and garlic bit of chili mm, damn fine and actually I've picked up two new varieties of it this year so we've been growing four leaf chicories I'm sure nobody really needs four leaf chicory varieties in their life but that's what we're doing <laughs> Another bed actually that's seen the wars, we've got um, the field beans that have been dug up so many times in that end of the bed. Haven't they girls? I know, constant, they're in battle mode. Yeah, but they'll still be doing what they need to do under the soil, which is leaving the nitrogen for the next plants. My poor uh, dragon's tongue mustard was looking pretty good until yesterday, but it has been 
dug up in the center there as you can see there's a big hole and roots showing and then we've got three little peppermint chards on this end uh, which are just sort of sparking back into life after looking a bit sad for a month or so as i said earlier in the year this was the first time i've actually tried um, to grow a peppermint chard over winter and i'm really impressed with how robust it is i don't think it's this hasn't had any protection or anything and look at those leaves and it has been pretty cold absolutely glorious stuff skipping ahead to more things bursting into life the uh, sorrel that is hiding out underneath this little cloche here is um yeah rocketing up that's absolutely gorgeous and at this time of year it makes the best sorrel soup but also it's the girlies favorite so yeah they're very pleased it's up on lettuces have survived the winter these are also quite bitter but much more of a lettucey type bitterness absolutely delicious and they've survived the winter just fine so again they're just starting to come back into growth now so we will have some very early lettuces parsnips we have two rows of parsnips actually and we've only dug up one but i'm slightly worried that they're starting to regrow which is always a problem because they start growing a core you know like they last all winter like super delicious and tender and then when they start to regrow in the spring that's like the very very center of them becomes really woody so i think we might have to whip them out of the ground fairly shortly it's not like harvesting a whole like row and a half of them is going to be a problem we're not going to get sick of parsnips because if the first half of the row that we dug up is anything to go by they are medium carrot sized at best <laughs> and actually that reminds me i've got to sow my parsnips this week um, for next year purple sprouting broccoli it's just starting up can you see that will it focus yes it will wonderful we have got three plants of that in here i'm chuffed we have had a couple of real dead years for purple sprouting broccoli it's one of those plants that like you grow it every year and then the year that you don't have it it's you're absolutely bereft and that was ours last year so i'm really happy that we've got some in that bed also is some cavalanero it's just going over we've been eating the sprouts off the top of it now this is very interesting okay all of those plants went in at the same time but one of them got really badly can you see that got really badly attacked by aphids super early on and they've stayed on there just absolutely gnarling it up uh, for the whole season not touched any of the other plants absolutely bizarre you would think it would spread oh look how dink even this little tiny purple sprouting has got a purple sprouting Ah. I should tell you what, I don't think mum's spotted the purple sprouting yet, so I'll tell her about that in a minute. She'll be, she'll be well excited. She too was bereft last year. On to more brassicas, because brassicas, you know. Mm. Uh, we have got kalets on the go at the moment. We have been eating these little beauties. They are like a ruffly Brussels sprout. You can see them all the way down the stem there. Absolute joy of a plant. Another thing which I will be sowing this month. Super gorgeous. Look at that. Oh, yeah beauties we've already pinched the top out so um you know like with a brussels sprout where you have like the big almost like a cabbage or massive brussels sprout on top we have already had that off them which is delicious and we're sort of slowly working our way down the stems you pick them just like you would a brussels sprout but not like a whole stem so often with a brussels sprout you like pick the whole stem and then you use the brussels sprouts off that the um kalets i find tend to ripen ripen but they get to the right like picking um kind of gradually up the stem so we tend to just snap them off as we need them so for example if I was going to take like that one there just snap it at the base and you've got your beautiful little calette of joy I was just about to show you some more brassicas <laughs> I am going to show you more brassicas but I've just realized that pretty much everything I'm showing you today other than the flowers uh, and the fruit trees is brassicas so I'm going to stop saying it <laughs> onto more plants there's some more cavalanero under here which we are eating the sprouts from just like the other one in fact i had cavalanero sprouts on toast for my breakfast this morning with butter and a load of salt on them and they were outstanding celeriac we've still got a couple of really decent sized ones in there we've got that one there and there's one at this end here that's a really good size the rest of them are quite small um, but I might make like a celeriac dauphinoise with the smaller ones because then it doesn't really matter that there's not a great deal of girth to them. <laughs> and uh, red Russian kale in the back there. Can you see that really beautiful lacy one at the back there? 
think it's absolutely gorgeous. I'm going to be growing that one again this year. Really, really pretty leaves, like proper grey. And then um, with that beautiful pink stripe down the centre, a stunner. This was something I showed you last week when I first spotted it. It's all about the sprouts at the moment, I'm telling you. Can you see the um, white sprouting broccoli is just starting in there? Really excited about that. Oh, there's a gorgeous head in the top there. Can I, can you see that? No, where are we? There. Come on, netting, clear off, clear off netting, come on. There it is. Absolutely joyous, that's very exciting. And then we've got more chard up this end. <laughs> more chard you say we have various dotted around uh, there's uh, this is a mixture of the lucullus and the just normal bietta and actually you know i've got that lucullus covered at the other end this hasn't been covered and it's looking fantastic that's brilliant here is my amazing kingsland white garlic looking fantastic <laughs> yes rubbish not a sausage to be seen but the checkmate has uh, decided to make an appearance. So not every single one of them has come up. You can see there's a couple of gaps in there, but I'm pretty happy with that. Having said that, it'll probably have white rot by the time we dig it out, so I won't get anything from it. <laughs> and in this bed is the thing that I am most excited about that we haven't tried yet. This is the Menestra Nera, which literally means black soup, <laughs> but it's like a traditional cabbage for making sort of, you know, well, cabbage soup really. <laughs> But the cabbage and tomato kind of Italian soups with, and it is probably one of the most beautiful brassicas I've ever grown. I'm taking the uh, the side off. <laughs> I know it's a bit brave of me, but we're actually going to pick some of this today, uh, so we need we need to get in here. But ah, uh, it's just stunning. Like, look at these beautiful curly leaves. So they are a sprouting broccoli, apparently a hybrid between a Cavallanero and a purple sprouting broccoli. The stems are whoppers, but feel super tender. And they've got this one main sprout out the top, which is what you normally get with the sprouting brassicas. But look at those leaves. They are like corkscrew curls. I oh, think they're just so beautiful. I absolutely love them. And I'm so excited about eating them. And you can see, so there's the main, oh sorry, we've got a bit of wind. And so you can see we've got the main, actually that one doesn't have a broccoli sprout in it, I'll go back to this one. There's like the main broccoli sprout in the top there. And then as you come down the plant, it's got further ones coming from each of the, the joints where the leaves are. But I, I think they are so, so beautiful, I can't even tell you. And so these are some of the seeds that we picked up from Amalfi and I remember seeing so where they were selling the seed packets in the market on the opposite side of the road i say road it was it was only about a meter like width it was a little lane they had these for sale in the racks like on these beautiful boxes outside this shop and i looked at them and thought oh, i have no idea what that is but it looks incredible um and then when i was like identifying on the seed packets because it was all in italian and i didn't know what the vegetable was called anyway um i thought that this was this looked like the closest thing to it. And I'm thrilled to say that's exactly what it was. And uh, we're gonna be eating them tonight and I am salivating. Pot tour wouldn't be complete without a bit of an update from in here. Um, it has been raining solidly uh, since we started this. <laughs> Typical, huh? Anyway, I still haven't dug all this out. Um, I forgot to bring the shovel again with me today. I know, complete fail. But equally, I wouldn't have been able to kind of progress with it anyway. So um, I'll bring the shovel up tomorrow and we'll start a bit more digging. And uh, there's no sign of any more rat activity in here. I'm absolutely wrong. The hole has reappeared. There's loads of sign of rat activity in here. <laughs> Whoop! Now I'm falling down the rat hole. Fantastic. Let's go back to vegetables. We've got new life appearing. And this end, we've got sort of herbs and well, perennial stuff in here, really. This is a, like a frond fennel, a leaf fennel. And uh, we've got garlic chives in here. The artichoke, which never does anything but looks beautiful, uh, doesn't ever get really much bigger than that, even though they're supposed to be about seven foot tall. <laughs> um, yeah, but you can just feel the new life coming into things with that beautiful, like vibrant green and soft in the middle there. I might just eat a bit of it. Ah, oh, it's like being punched in the face by licorice. Mm. 
wonderful. Having thought a little further about that, I don't actually fancy being punched in the face with licorice. Just, you know, in case anybody was planning it. We have leeks on the go. These have picked up so much in the last like three weeks. They're looking really good. Obviously, we've still got the peppermint chard being protected under here. Interestingly, the stuff that's under here doesn't look as good as the stuff that's down there that hasn't been protected. Another garden mystery. <laughs> but yeah, this stuff should come good. I say that like a couple of them have really started kicking off and they do get a bit more heat and a bit more sun down that way. So that's probably the reason for that. Behind this white screen, we have that first lot of broad beans that I got in. They're still fine. Uh, well, once we get past this last little bit of, I say last little bit, <laughs> it's very optimistic of me, isn't it? But once we get past this current phase of really cold, crappy weather, um, I'll whip this off and get them all tied in because they have kind of octopus a bit under there. Um, but I don't want to whip this off because we've got like the threat, of, the threat of frost over the next couple of days. So I'll just leave them be and they can be tied up later. As you saw last week, discovered toad spawn in here and actually when I was looking at those pictures you can see the toads actually in situ. <laughs> um, the toads don't appear to be here today or elsewhere they're just hiding which is probably sensible because it's a bit of a naff day um, but still masses of toad spawn all the way across here which I'm absolutely thrilled to see, really thrilled to see. It's lovely. This Having a pond is one of those things on an allotment. Like it feels like it's kind of taking up valuable vegetable growing space. But again, this is our sort of sad side of the plot in terms of roots. Um, and also I think what it can give a plot in terms of wildlife and stareability is huge. Like I can, on a warm day when there's like loads of stuff happening in here, you literally can just sit here with your sandwich and stare into this pond for hours. And that's jolly. I mean, it's not very good productive wise, like the weeding still needs doing, but just looking at all the life in this little bit of water. It's lovely. And the um, water lilies coming back. We've got those big tufts of grass in there, which we meant to get out. But obviously now we've got those frog spawn, toad spawn, sorry, in here. It's a bit more tricky. Yeah, don't get distracted, Jesse. You're doing something. So these two little square beds here that we've just got like the slotted, they're like compost bins, but we've lined them and put soil in them. This was the carrot bed last year, hence the carrot box going over the top to stop the um, carrot root fly. And this one we've had the rhubarb in. Now this rhubarb, when we dug it out of over there, we thought it had crown rot, but like it's really hard to get rid of a plant. So we thought we'd give it one more try in here. And last year it was rubbish really really sad like didn't really come up with any great strength or oomph whatsoever so we've made the decision to scrap it by a new rhubarb plant of a, of a known variety you know because this was just like a hand-me-down which is always the best but it was a hand-me-down we don't know what type it is so we're going to put one in front of the apricot tree over there we've made that decision and now this one has come back looking fantastic this year <laughs> I think we probably still will put one over there. But talking of new life, look at this. The pear tree is absolutely covered in buds. Look at those clusters. Oh, this is a conference pear. Um, this thing is providing nothing. Uh, we've just got it sat on there because we didn't have anywhere to put it. So just ignore that. But look at the daffs underneath. Actually, I'm not going to talk to you about daffs because I'll finish what I'm sort of chatting about up here and then I'm going to do... Um, a bit of a montage, <laughs> classic, a bit of a montage of all the flowers that are coming out because it's just looking so beautiful. Um, I think it deserves some music. Yes. <sighs> Talking of blossom though, um, I'm a bit worried about my apricot. This tree is my absolute pride and joy. <laughs> when we get apricots from it, um, which is most years, actually, do you know, we've only had one year where we got nothing, um, touch wood. Uh, but some years we get masses and some years we only get a few, but the apricots from it, I'm not kidding you, are, I, I don't even have any words for it. It's like apricot flavoring on steroids. They are the most delicious thing on the planet. <laughs> and I love this tree. It's beautiful. And 
oh, it's just wonderful. To grow our own apricots is just like something I never thought we would be able to do. And it's joyous. Uh, however, one of the reasons that growing apricots and peaches and nectarines um, in this country is so difficult when you're not kind of undercover or there's just lots of people grow them in greenhouses you see particularly if you're up north because of the time of year that they blossom so they go so early like look at this it's basically in full like whack mode <laughs> and it is so early we are nowhere near past frost if the flowers are pollinated it can actually survive a bit of frost afterwards so like if you catch it just right like say the uh, beginning at end of February beginning of March we have like a little bit of a warm period like we had and it all the flowers come out and they get pollinated and then it all goes back and it, it and then we have another frost like end of March it can survive that fine you can get loads and loads of fruit but if the frost or the real cold temperatures hit at the wrong point for the flowers and they can't set fruit you get nothing and that's very frustrating <laughs> So every year when it's flowering, we're like, oh my goodness. And like people recommend like you put fleece over it. And one year, must have been about four or five years ago, uh, that's what we did because it was just completely bad timing. And it was like we weren't going to, because it looked like it was going to be like the worst possible timing. So I wrapped one of the branches quite gently, or well, very gently, in fleece just to try and protect at least one of the branches, you know, so we'd get fruit. But unfortunately, along with the cold weather came wind. And so that kind of bag banging against flowers just knocked all the flowers off anyway. So in the end, we actually got fruit everywhere else on the tree, apart from that one branch that I had protected. But just have a look at how spectacularly beautiful uh, the apricot blossom is. That when they're just starting out, so they've got these beautiful red backers and they kind of come out looking a little bit like balloon flowers. Oh, it's just the most stunning, just the most beautiful. Actually, I might come back to that when we're doing the flower montage. We'll come back to the apricot blossom because it's... We have a bit of black currant action just starting up there. Likewise with the gooseberries. A little bit of green just starting to appear. There's new life in the strawberries fresh tips just starting up on the loganberry new growth on the raspberries it's just starting to emerge the round radicios from last year are producing again you see those beautiful little rosettes each one of them will be a separate chicory and we have a whole row of them we have nasturtiums self-seeded nasturtiums germinating Actually, I've just come down here to the um, strawberry bed where last, must have been about four days ago, there was some like proper up nasturtium seedlings with two proper nasturtium leaves on them. I mean, only small, but like recognisably nasturtiums, they're gone. So they must have uh, got overexcited in that little bit of warm we had and then uh, realised their mistake rather quickly because there's no evidence of them at all anymore apart from that one little sprout. Even the apple trees are just starting to do something. I think that's that's where we are. Apart from like all the exciting flowers that you're about to see, we've got quite a lot going on for the 1st of March. Right, flowers.
Are you ready to pick some Minestra though? Yeah? Okay. Right. I'm gonna... They are already sprouting at the bottom. This one's got one. Oh, sure. Oh, I mean... I reckon I can get my hand in there. If I push it this way... Yeah, if you pull it that way, I can get that. It's going to be so tender. It's going to be outrageously delicious. Yeah. Okay. That's the right. The I think that's the two with the biggest. There's a few others. Yeah, coming. there are loads coming. But look at that. Yeah, they're beautiful, aren't they? That Can't is. <laughs> they look like you can have them in a bouquet. Yes. We're just going to have one on a plate yes. like that each. Yes. <laughs> I'm so looking forward to it. So, but look how many are coming. Can you see them all? Like yeah, just thousands. Oh, I'm so excited. We'll probably go home and find they're revolting now. <laughs> Beauty. I think that wind stopped Ready? a little bit. Yep. Okay, chaps, taste test. This is the Minestra Nera. First time we're trying it. <laughs> it's just been done sauteed with a bit of garlic, a bit of olive oil, butter, salt, dead simple on a little piece of toast. You know how much I love things on toast. And in conclusion, it is absolutely delicious. Quite brassica -y. Doesn't really taste like purple sprouting broccoli or cavallonero. It's got a much subtler taste, but it is absolutely beautiful and so sweet. I can't wait to pick more. Good morning, chaps. It is a beautiful sunny morning, you know. Um, and actually, I was just standing in the conservatory and um, the potatoes are chitting away really nicely but I've just remembered that we don't actually have any of the Red Duke of York that we were meant to get a whole kilo bag of um, so I am going to nip down to the try not to get run over nip down to the allotment shop and um, see if they've got any Red Dukes down there so fingers crossed because <laughs> we're planning to put in a whole bed of Red Dukes uh, which is why we wanted a whole kilo bag um, so yeah let's go down and check them out this is their woody waste collection. It is huge amount. Pink, Duke of York. We did, oh look mum, there's Caledonian Pearl. What? Caledonian Pearl. Oh, let's get some of uh, yeah. Even if we share them with somebody else, we should. We might just not have been one selected. Yeah, but they're normal Duke, not red. Okie dokie, Caledonian Pearl. Now there are a lot of potatoes in here and we really don't need that many um, like I said we were planning to do a whole bed of the red jukes um, rather than these but now we've got a kilo of these <laughs> um, what am I going to do should I do a bed each should I do a bed of red jukes and a bed of these I mean they're first earlies both of them so they're not going to be taking up a bed for a really long amount of time so I might do that anyway so we've got Caledonian Pearl an unexpected addition uh, still no red jukes just choose a few of these. These have actually already started off quite nicely. Get those in there. Another one. What else have we got? Actually, I tell you what. Look, there's only six there. Like that's that's the six, and we've actually only got another one, two, three, four, five, another six in there. So I think we'll be able to use them all. So we are still in chaos in the kitchen, um, but there has been a bit of progress, a couple of things. So first of all, I didn't show you cooking of the Minestra Nera, but there's the possibility that we're not too far off um, getting back into doing a bit of cooking because I don't know if you can see this, but everything moves in this kitchen when you 
Can you see all of this moving? Right, you ready for me to walk past? That is just the wobble on the floor. In fact, oh, I'm knocking things off the table. <laughs> because we don't have a floor. And the oven, this enormous tank beast, is at the moment like disappearing into this hole. It's like sloping so far. All the oil is on one side of the pan, which is very annoying. <laughs> but we did have the people over recently. Uh, now we've actually found the leak. Where's the coffee cups? Over there. Um, yeah, no, now we have found the leak. Um, we're going to be able to actually make some movement, make some progress on this. So it's possible that we will be starting cooking fairly soon. However, during the time that uh, they're coming to do this, it's going to be sort of mid-March, it looks like. And that conservatory there is where we keep all like seedlings because it's the lightest place in the house, etc, etc. Well, that is where all the stuff is going to be stacked. So the oven's going in there. Everything's going in there while they fix the kitchen. So that is another reason why I have to really get a crack on move with the um, moving the staging in the greenhouse because we're going to lose the use of that at the most crucial time of the year. However, I am not complaining. If we get a floor, I will be a happy, happy bunny rabbit. Right, let's nip upstairs for a mo before we go to the allotment. Oh. Yeah, so still on the lookout for the Red Duke of York potatoes. Um, it's funny that they didn't have any because it's a bog standard potato. Uh, I'm sure they'll have some in Squires. I'll go head over there next week, I think. Yeah. I mean, it's not imperative that we have them, but they're just such a joyous potato. You know when you're like digging around for potatoes and you see that like bright pink, like fuchsia pink staring up at you out of the soil? It's a joy. It's a joy. So yeah, we'll go and find some more of those and then we'll discuss whether or not we're going to do two beds of potatoes or just the one, what we're going to do with the Caledonian Pearl. But that Caledonian Pearl we grew last year and oh, it was such a nice potato. So I'm really pleased we've got that. It's one of those things though, it's like we had, <laughs> we had enough potatoes and now we've got too many, but never mind. <laughs> never mind. Best laid plans and all that. Just get overexcited and buy new ones, don't you? Oh, well. Talking of getting overexcited though, just laid out on my desk here. I'm not going to show you because it's going to be in, in this month <laughs> is tomato sowing month. So this week I'm going to put out a second video, which is going to be what to sow or what I'm sowing in March. Not a what to sow, um, but just kind of going through the things that I'm going to sow this month. And oh, dearie me, sorry about me sounding a bit like Barry White. I've got a cold. Um, and as I'm speaking, I can hear I've, I'm very, very low. <laughs> sorry about that, chaps. Um, maybe I'll try and speed this up so I'm a bit higher pitched. <laughs> Does this sound any better or shall I go back to Barry White? I think I'll go back to Barry White. Yeah, so talking of seeds, I've been going through what I want to sow this month and ha, oh, I'd forgotten how manic March is for sowing. Wow. And this year, because we're doing so many more flowers and March is a big flower month as well. Whew, like my seed box for, for March is huge huge so yeah that video will be coming out later this week or possibly very early next week um what i'm sowing for march but in this month of sowing are the tomatoes and i'm having a terrible time working out which varieties to grow i've got so many i will have do a tomato special on what i'm sowing but holy smoke holy smoke people have been so generous and sent me so many varieties and i look them all up and they're all things that I want to grow. I do not have space for that many tomatoes. I really don't. Um, I've got space for about 17 tomato plants in the polytunnel. Uh, that will be 17 different varieties. Uh, outdoors, I want to grow a selection of blight resistant tomatoes and that uh, however many of those I can find, I'll get in outside. I've also got some short season tomatoes I want to try outside again. If we don't have such a wet summer, we might not have such early blight this year, so it's worth giving them a go. Um, and also, I'm going to have a little bit of space in the greenhouse eventually because I'm going to be doing all my chilies in there, but I'm not going to have aubergines um, in the greenhouse this year, so which means they're going to be shifted into the polytunnel. So I have a little bit of leeway, 
but it's still not like 90 varieties or whatever of tomato I've got. I don't have space for that. So yeah, hard times ahead trying to make those decisions. And then it's like, do you grow the ones that you know you love or do you take a risk on a whole new set? Or is there balance to be had? Oh, I don't know, chaps. I don't know. Mm. Anyway, I'm going to finish this cup of coffee. I don't want to miss the sunshine because it's a beautiful day and we haven't had too many of them. The wind was terrible and I think it probably picked up on the mic, so I'm really sorry about that. Um, I was you, I was using the microphone, but it was properly like, it was that kind of wind that was like, like really gusty and I could feel it catching the microphone, so I'm really sorry about that. Um, but the sound has improved, hasn't it, chaps? Sound has improved. So yeah, I am just going to uh, finish this cup of coffee. I'm going to go up into the sunshine and I'm going to leave you with me digging out the polytunnel. After last week's potty mouth, when Tony really called me up on my lack of action on that front, I am not leaving another video without having started digging that out. Also, JB has got his greenhouse up on its base and it looks fantastic. So he's been like all guns blazing and um, I've been raking leaves. So I'm going to say my cheers now. I know it's a cup of coffee, but you know, 10 o'clock in the morning uh, isn't a good time for a glass of wine. Uh, <laughs> or at least that's a slippery slope. I don't want to go down. Um, so I'm going to do cheers with my cup of coffee and um, big cheers to my Monday clubbers. They are my patrons, the people whose names you see at the end of every video. Uh, they are the sole reason that these videos uh, continue to be made. And I'm incredibly grateful for their support. Likewise, cheers to everybody who watches every week. And um, yeah, I'll see you at the allotment in a sec and then I'll see you same place, same time next week. Cheers, chaps. Mm. Not same place, same time. That's nonsense for once. That's not it. There is going to be a video in between, isn't there? March seed sowing. Yes. So you not same place, not same time. Cheers, chaps. Right, better get my hat and coat back on. Hello. Coming in. Come on, Zos. Come on. I can't open that gate, it's not mine. There we go. Hello, darling. Hello. Come on, in, here we go.